Hey everybody, it's Erin from TechGadgetsCanada.com and husband Roger is here and we are here with another van update and hopefully it's starting to look like something. Yeah, hopefully. <laughs> this was not a couple weeks, I was going to say a week, but it's been a couple weeks. It was not a couple weeks of put it in, take it out, do it over, but it was definitely what I would call a week of lots of little things. Would you agree? <laughs> Yeah, I would agree. I'm sure we'll go into some more detail, but it sort of seems like, you know, we plan a process that has five steps and then after you complete step two, you realize you need a whole bunch more things before you can even begin step three. So it's so. actually 12 steps yeah. instead of five. Yeah. It's been like that, but yeah. it's coming around. It's coming around. A uh, couple of the big advancements in the last couple of weeks are what you can see up here. Um, we'll step out of the way and let you guys have a look. So we got our upper cabinets in finally, and we're really excited about those. Um, we talked a little bit in our last video about some of the modifications we made to those cabinets um, and why we needed to make them, but they're in and we're pretty happy with them size-wise, I think, overall and build quality, would you say? Yep. <laughs> yep, yeah, solid bronze metal performance. For now, for now. Um, the other thing that we have started working on is the bed platform, which you can also probably see just a bit here in behind us. So, Roger, why don't you tell our friends what we have done with the bed platform? Yeah, okay. Um, I kind of had it in mind to, you know, make these sort of like modular bed platform with like slats and like on a frame and you can kind of take it out like it's a breakfast tray and that way you can modify the storage space and stuff like that. I did not know about this. Yeah, but I didn't do any of that. <laughs> I didn't try to plan any of that into this van. We basically built the van uh, bed platform like this, created the walls underneath for the storage area. So in our case, you know, we've got mm. what we call the puppy box, which is the kennel that our dogs will travel in. Yeah. And um, if you're using the van and you don't have dogs, then that's a great luggage storage compartment mm -hmm. for you too. Um, so to just build the, that box essentially, and then we've got a couple of partitions at the back in the, what everyone calls the garage area. Mm -hmm. Um, and those are measured to fit some bins. And if we show you that, uh, I'll give you some insight into one of the fights that uh, Aaron and I always have <laughs> when we work on these vans, right? But anyway, the point is, is that those are just like partitions that are standing up mm -hmm. and they don't have any real structure to them by themselves. Their structure comes into place when we put the bed platform in and we start to screw in, um, these planks on top. So. Uh, Aaron had the idea that um, it might be nice to use cedar underneath the, the bed platform. Um, and I'm all about cedar. I love yes. the look of it and the smell of it. Uh, so the and band, it smells great. Yeah. Smell a vision television for you guys right now, but it does really smell nice in here. It's beautiful. It's like a, it's like a Swedish sauna. In here. <laughs> uh, but yeah, I believe so, they pronounce it sauna. 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 It's like a sauna. The sauna. So what we did was we just went to Home Depot, bought five and a half inch fence boards, cedar fence boards, uh, cut them down to size. And then those are going to be the span of our bed platform. Um, they're going to work. They're going to be strong enough to support us when we're sleeping. Um, they are going to hold together all that kind of framework that I told you about underneath. And I want to believe that cedar wood has a mold resistant property, um, that a lot of, you know, a lot of van lifers talk about so. how, yeah, they you line need... chests with cedar. Yeah, exactly. Right? Yeah, and, and there's like storage. a closet liner that you can mm -hmm. buy that's made of cedar and it keeps your know, moths away and whatnot. Um, but the point of it is, is that, you know, a lot of van life people know mm. that you can have problems with mildew or mold underneath your mattress. And so getting some air circulation underneath that is key. And, uh, you know, we've got the air circulation and, and I want to believe the cedar will help, uh, you know, mitigate we'll, we'll some of that mold. We'll report back. Yeah. We'll report back. So that, what else did we do? Oh, the other huge thing we did is right up here. Mm. This... <laughs> Every, Roger loves doing this stuff. Roger loves cutting holes into things and then figuring it out as he goes. Um, but we installed the air conditioner. This is the Dometic air conditioner, the Brisk 2 Evo. Um, and we're going to do another separate video actually about that air conditioner and the installation and all that, um, as well as the fan that we've installed for ventilation. Um, but that was a huge project this week, which kind of we've, we've never done before. I've certainly never done before, but mm -hmm. talk a little bit about that. Yeah, it, it magically worked out. Um, the hard part is getting the unit on the roof. Yeah. Uh, the easy part is cutting the hole in the roof and, you know, measuring up the, the area and stuff like that. It actually assembled pretty easily, too, uh, once it was up on the roof. I'm surprised, incidentally, at how well designed it is. Yeah. Um, we're really, really concerned about water tightness in the seal. The seal is just a dense foam, mm -hmm. it seems. And it's, um, you know, the installation instructions are 
They're good. Like they're pretty it's good. Basically, yeah. Like it's got an edge, like almost like a frame of this foam around it. And I was like, well, what are we sealing it with? Yeah. What's where's the caulking? Where's the butyl tape? Where's how are we making it waterproof? And Roger's like, nothing in the instruction says we're supposed to do that. You just kind of put it down on top, and then it sort of sandwiches with the bottom piece, and it gives you, I guess, a compression fit. Yeah. Hi. And so Hi, we buddy. we didn't believe that. So we put it up yeah. and then left it in three days of kind of torrential oh, rain. Oh, it was brutally wet. Yeah. yeah, like the rain was insane. It was monsoon season and uh, it, it didn't drip, like not one yeah. drip in the van. So kudos to Dometic for yeah. uh, for that seal. And, and the, the reason why I think I don't believe it uh, or was reluctant to believe it is because for anyone who's put a, a fantastic fan in, uh, you know that you, you're going to seal that with butyl tape and then you're going to like dump that lap sealant all over it yeah. to make sure that you get a watertight seal. Um, and there's nothing like that with the air conditioner. So I was, I was hesitant to, to believe yeah. it, but it's did a pretty solid test. So, yep. And it's, so then you cover it up with the little shroud, the plastic, the kind of nice finishing bits in there that has all the knobs and controls and louvers or levers and such on it. So it, it looks really great. We're really happy with it. Um, we've got to get the wiring connected yet, but we'll see how it uh how how well it cools yeah so just a little note on that this is an ac device right so if you're running dc you're going to need a lot of uh, ac like power not air conditioning that's right it's, it's an, an, AC, AC, it's an AC, ac ac not a AC, dc ac no not a dc ac so if you're going to run it uh off just a battery bank then you're going to need a lot of units uh, a lot yeah. of amperage or amp hours rather and um we don't have that. We're planning 200 amp hours in this van right now. Yeah. Um, but we do have uh, the Renogy 3000 watt inverter charger uh, that we can actually show you how we installed it uh, mm -hmm. in a little bit later on. But that's actually what's going to power our AC. And we don't intend to use this unit unless we're connected to shore power. Yeah, definitely. Because that, uh, yeah, we get about eight minutes of use out of that before we're, <laughs> if that. Before we're done. Yeah. All right. Well, let's take a look at some of the other stuff we've done in the van here. Down here, this is one of my favorite parts, uh, mainly because I was forced to do it all by myself with no help, no guidance, and I suck at anything related to math or measuring. So I'm actually pretty pleased with how this went down. We talked a bit, of, uh, a bit about it in our last video. This is the Floor Pops, I think the um, product is called. It's peel and stick floor tile. And again, as we mentioned in the last video, this is definitely not outdoor rated. It's not RV or camper van rated, um, but we got such a sweet deal on it that we decided we were going to just put it down and try it and see what happens. Um, all the flooring and we still had some left over cost us about 60 bucks. So feels like we couldn't go wrong. It's a nice, um, feels pretty durable. It went down stuck quite well. Um, even the edges and the corners feel flat and even and I'm super happy with how it turned out. Um, Roger needs to come back in here now and talk about some of the other things that we've been able to work out the last couple of weeks. Um, key among them, the cabinets and some pretty awesome other stuff back here. Yeah, so the cabinets, did we talk about the cabinets before? We touched on it a couple of videos ago, but they weren't, uh, they weren't ready, ready for show yet. <laughs> okay, so the idea kind of from the get-go of this one was to put the battery behind the driver's seat. Um, the battery access in the, uh, the Ford Transit van is uh, underneath the driver's seat, just like it is in the Mercedes Sprinter. Um, so we wanted to you know, minimize the cable runs between the two and um, you know, save, a, save a little bit of money that way, and I think probably save some efficiency as well. Um, so we built a cabinet uh, that's uh, you know, this vast cavity right here. Uh, that'll have our batteries, most of our electrical in it. Uh, and then above it was the fridge. And the idea behind that is that, you know, we've got the fridge in the lower level in the Sprinter and it's, it's fine, it's good, but it just sort of seems to me that like when you open the fridge, it, you know, you get to be looking right into it yeah. without having to bend over, right? Yeah. And you're in the fridge a lot. We're in the fridge a lot anyway. You know, we cook a lot. Yeah, cook a lot and get me, you know, get me another beer. I'll get you another beer, like whatever the case may be. So, you know, I thanks, just... Thanks for correcting that, by the way. <laughs> Hey, we both drink the beer. <laughs> That's true. So it makes a lot of sense, I think, to have that the fridge open up uh, at eye level. So we tried it in this van, and um, we went with the truck fridge um, 65. It's the TF65, and this is the AC-DC version. So whenever it's hooked up to shore power, it'll run on AC. Um, but yeah, I'm, I don't know. It looks pretty good so yeah, far. Yeah, it's, uh, that was our big debate was it was much smaller than the previous one in the Sprinter van. And I'm still not convinced we're not going to be kicking ourselves down the road, wishing that we didn't get a bigger fridge, but it fits into the opening. Roger built this cabinet based on just the measurements and the specs 
um, that we found online for this fridge. So when it arrived, it was kind of like, please let it fit. And not that I don't trust your construction or your measurement, because you can actually do that. But the last time we put the cabinet in for the other truck fridge, something went wrong and it was just like half an inch too small of a cavity and poor Roger had to pull it out and basically re-engineer it. Well, we just basically had to hack an Ikea cabinet. Yeah. So this is why we didn't choose Ikea cabinets this time around. We this went with custom-made cabinets and I would, I would always go custom-made cabinets from now on. Yeah. So we've got, um, we've got that cabinet that's for all the electrical, like Roger said, and the fridge above it. This is our bank of drawers, which Roger custom-made as well. And there's going to be a little sliding table um, that'll look kind of like a drawer, but it'll pull out and we'll have a little um, hidden table access, I guess. Mm -hmm. And what else? What else? What else? What else? Well, if you want to, we can go look in the back and get some insight into the fight that Aaron and I always have when we are making a van. This, that's a good promo, actually. Do you, want, do you want to know what Roger and I fight about? We'll tell you coming up. I feel like an ad should have played there, like a commercial break should have happened did, and then... Did you put one in there? I don't know. You should. I, I probably should. should. Well, maybe I did. I don't know. I'll figure, we'll figure that out later. Um, so this is, this is the garage. And by the way, you're not drunk. Um, I don't think we are either. Um, the van's parked a bit on a, on a hill, for lack of a better thing. So it is slightly crooked you're not going crazy and i'm sorry for all of those of you who just like this mm -hmm. is driving you crazy it's driving me a bit crazy too um but it is what it is so this is the garage <laughs> i tried that it just looks weird does that look better it I looks don't better know. we just have to be like this <laughs> this is i'm gonna i'm gonna get some thumbs down on this uh on this video rating i can see it now all right all right we're gonna split the difference yeah all right okay so the garage, the fight Roger and I have. Well, why don't you tell? Yeah, me? I was going to say. Uh, okay, so I I firmly believe that you should design your van around the stuff you plan to bring with you. If you just make big, wide open compartments, you're going to have a lot of wasted space. You're going you're to lose space efficiency, and you are going to, uh, in other cases, like bring a lot of stuff that you don't need. Um, now this is like the biggest Ford Transit that you can get. Yeah. Uh, this happened to be the van that was available to us at the time, and it was a good deal, and we bought it. Um, I would have no trouble whatsoever living in one of the smaller ones, lower roof, shorter wheelbase, uh, shorter length. Uh, but Aaron likes, you know, Aaron likes the full package, right? I like space. But here's this is what I'm getting at is that um, with the partitions here that are right behind Aaron, these are spaced so that they'll fit one of these boxes perfectly. And they're also the height of this is two of these boxes. So what I'll do before, you know, all is said and done here is I'll have some rails uh, on each of these partition walls and these will, the boxes will slide in and out of that space like drawers. So where, where does the fighting come in? Because I think this is a brilliant idea. Aaron just likes to have one large drawer, one medium sized drawer and one small drawer, right? So when we built the drawer cabinet, for example, the okay. question was, what do you want to put in these drawers? And, and I was like, how can I tell you? We haven't yeah. lived in it yet. We haven't camped in it yet. How do I know what I need to bring? Which I think is fair enough, right? <laughs> um, but at the same time, it's sort of like, well, let's take some time now and figure out what it is that we want to bring because then that's going to help us figure out what to build. In much the same way that, you know, we need, uh, we realized after the first van build, we need a propane stove yeah. because we like to cook a lot and we're, we're going to need that kind of cooking capability within the van because if it's raining outside or we meet inclement weather, yeah. which we often do. Yeah, then, especially traveling in the winter. Yeah. And I mean, you know, we love the road trip hack of hitting the Starbucks every morning and getting the egg whites and the coffee, but it's also nice to be able to make your own. So, yeah. you know, we know what we need. So in much the same way that you're going to um, design a van that has the appliances you need, I think you should also consider the space that you need to use and design your storage, your cupboards, your overhead cabinets and stuff like that around the things that you need to bring. So put some thought into that. That was... Um... That was a terrible fight. That was pretty we really. Fight. Yeah, you played dirty though. That's not, not cool. <laughs> not cool. I okay. just got to be helpful the whole time. <laughs> you mentioned the propane stove, and that's a really good place to leave this and tee up what we're working on next. So um, we also went with um, Dometic for our propane stove and our new sink, which I am super excited about. You guys are going to have to tune in to the next episode to see this. I'm super bummed about the sink. Thank you, Dometic. That sink is awesome. It's way better than the hack job I had put together. Okay, but wait. Don't tell people why you're bummed about the sink. We've okay. got to save something for the next video. Sure. We'll we'll talk about why the sink is, is why I'm in love with it and why it's a disappointment to you. Hang on. No, it's not. It's not <laughs> real. 
<laughs> the sink's amazing. I'm this super bummed about it. I'm like this. really bummed about this amazing sink. You're bummed because you don't get to do a special project, which yeah. is... <laughs> which would have been amazing, right? But anyway. We'll, okay. Yeah. We'll talk about that next time. Um, but we do have some construction work to do on another cabinet um, for the stove and the sink, which we'll talk about. And we're going to finish off the bed compartment here. Um, and then we're actually thinking about taking it out and just throwing the mattress in, sleeping in it for a night and just seeing how, you know, how livable it is. How she goes. How she goes. All right. So that, uh, is there anything else you can think of that we want to throw in here? No, I'm good. <laughs> we're good. We got dinner reservations yeah. too. So it's I think this is a very efficient use of the time. <laughs> and us fighting. All right. We're going to go fight over dinner. Thanks everybody for watching this video. And just a reminder, if you want to see more about what we're doing, you can head over to techgadgetscanada.com. You can also always find me on Twitter or Instagram. I'm at Erin L-O-Y-Y-C. And do you know the Facebook page? Yes. Facebook.com slash Tech Gadgets Canada. Yes. <laughs> hey everybody, it's Aaron from Tech Gadget the, the 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 You should know by now. I should know my own website.